Hello everyone, today we will work on Doom of Iron Line Micron. If you don't know what the Doom Cube mod is, when you add 15-15 uh, or 30-30 I guess extrusion corners to the frame and this lets you mount double panels and it also lets you add uh, an another electronics chamber on the top. So the double panels is for better insulation and an electronics chamber just makes your life easier. Obviously you have more room to play with and this is especially nice on the Micron because the electronics chamber uh, is very small on the Micron and it's very difficult to get stuff in there so having another electronics chamber on the top is uh, very nice so uh, here as you can see I have the new extrusions these are bought from the FH as far as I know only he carries these because as far as I know this is like a custom order he did so yeah I'll link I'll place a link to that in the description below I ended up with two colors because I accidentally received the wrong one. So I have space gray and black here. We will be using black. I also printed the side panel mounts as you can see with the PC panels inside and these are ready to be mounted on the printer as well. So uh, yeah, let's start uh, working on the Micron Doom Cube. But before that, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay offers cheap, fast and high quality PCB prototyping services. As someone who used their PCB services in the past for multiple projects on this channel, I can confidently recommend them to anyone who's looking for a PCB manufacturer for their next project. They also offer MJF, SLA and other types of 3D printing services and other prototyping services like CNC machining, injection molding and laser cutting. For more information, click the link in the description below. So now as you can see the outer Doom Cube frame uh, is mounted on the printer and not only that but also the side panels are also mounted on the printer. Uh, I started this project a while ago so this mount technically these side panel mounts are a bit outdated. It's using these uh, 18 I think millimeter long uh, button head screws. Uh, the current design is a bit different. The current design has the outer panels screwing directly into the skirts which we will get to later in the video uh, but uh, I ordered these panels a few months ago so yeah, this is the older version but you know it should work just fine these panels are PC uh, instead of acrylic uh, PC has higher temperature resistance than acrylic so I decided to go with polycarbonate for those and uh, as you can see the rear panel is also transparent so that is also PC uh, yeah, might as well have a clear transparent a rear panel as well. That also means that I'll have to figure out how to do the Bowden tube run. So normally this sticks out uh, here to the rear panel. Uh, that's not going to be possible in this case but unless I want to drill polycarbonate which is possible but yeah I don't want to do that. So I guess we'll figure out a way to route this through the top electronics chamber or something like that. Uh, we'll see. I also assembled the uh, door frame but uh, this, to be able to mount this, I need to figure out a hinge solution for this. I'm sort of taking the lazy route and just waiting for other people to come up with a 3D printable solution for that. But if by the time I'm done with the rest of this video, if that's, there is nothing available, then I will just, I guess, uh, design, design and 3D print a 1515 extrusion hinge. I removed all the electronics and the Z drives, skirts and the deck panel. And uh, now it's time for the new panels and the new skirts, new, uh, new bottom electronics. But uh, before that I want to show you how the double panels will work for the top and bottom. So this is the bottom, the printer is upside down, uh, deck panels. So uh, there are these mounts that uh, you know go in the corner. I actually had to drill a hole to fit the M3 nut in there, which is not ideal. But you know that's not a part that's normally uh, visible. Anyway, uh, there are these parts and these are 9mm thick, the extrusions are 15mm thick. So on the top and bottom of this part, there is 3mm until the top and bottom of the extrusion. And uh, yeah, you just put the panel on both sides and screw it in. So that's the panel mounting mechanism. As you can see the Z drives, I didn't move these to the top, I don't intend to. With the standard Doom Cube setup, uh, you normally have the Z drives on the top and the Z idlers on the bottom like uh, for example on the Voron 2 here as you can see the Z drives are on the top and that's mostly for electronics like it's, it just makes it easier to do the wiring but in the case of the Micron I don't think that makes uh, much sense so if I move the Z drives to the top the top electronics chamber won't have much space left for the uh, for electronics so I can only put the octopus there 
Uh, I guess I can put the Raspberry Pi there too, but you know, the point is it will be very crowded and I want both the Octopus and the Raspberry Pi easily accessible versus the power supply and the Z drives themselves. Well, they aren't that important. I can keep them on the bottom electronics chamber. So on a Micron, because the space is limited on both chambers, I think it makes more sense to just keep the Z drive on the bottom and use the top chamber for the Octopus and the Raspberry Pi and the bottom chamber for the Z drives and the power supplies. Uh, the cables will be run through these extrusions. That's one of the features of these 1515 Doom Cube extrusions for the uh, Micron. This is also similar to the 2020 Doom Cube extrusions on the larger worn tube, so same idea. So uh, yeah, it's time for the panels. I'm still waiting for the la uh, technically not laser cut, uh, technically CNC dotting panels. So I went with an uh, polycarbonate on the inner side and ACM on the outer side the panel assembly so there will be a transparent panel uh, for both deck panels uh, assemblies so both uh, for top and bottom there will be a PC panel and then you know the gap and then the uh, black ACM panel and the reason I'm going with the transparent panel on both sides is I want to experiment with some lighting so on the top side first of all I'll remove these old uh, LED lights uh, I'll put uh, white LED lighting and the diffuser fi uh, film behind the uh, PC panel just like I'm doing on the Voron Zero. Well, on the Voron Zero it's already a diffused acrylic panel. In my case this is a transparent PC but with a diffuser film it should be about the same. On the bottom uh, I want to experiment with RGB. So I have a bunch of old RGB strips. Uh, these PCB RGB strips. These aren't individually addressable. These aren't the NeoPixel stuff. So you can see that there is a plus that's 12 volts and BRG, so RGB. So those are the grounds. So the entire strips uh, turns on and off. So this is the older style RGB. But uh, these draw a decent amount of power. I don't know if I'm going to run them at 100% or not. But uh, yeah, if I decide to do that, the power, uh, the back converter on the Octopus, I don't really want to uh, rely on that fully. And I already have a 12 volt power supply, this Meanwell LRS. Uh, 5012 so I'll mount this next to the uh, 24 volt power supply and these two will be on the bottom and uh, yeah the LED wires and the motor wires and the bed wires run to the top through these cutouts the Z drag chain I'll have to reverse and then yeah they'll just be routed to the top chamber I also want to improve the camera mount. I don't want it on the side like this. I want that in the front and I have some plans for that, but I haven't actually designed parts yet. So yeah, that'll be uh, later. I removed the gantry from the printer to A, reverse the Z drag chain and B also just to make the replacement of the mini afterburner to the mini staff burner a bit easier. And uh, I just noticed something. I remember doing this, but I completely forgot about it. This was my strain relief on the mini uh, afterburner. I think I printed the original strain relief if I remember correctly, but that broke over time. So I just replaced that with a PCB here. And I was using this hole as the, you know, the zip tie hole for the strain relief. So yeah, I guess this is what happens when you have a billion uh, different PCBs lying around from different breakouts and whatnot. And now the mini stuff burner is assembled. And um, yeah, here it is. I don't truly, I already talked about the mini style burner in the Voron Zero video, the last one, so I'm not going to talk about you know style, mini style burner versus mini afterburner, but yeah, here it is. Uh, it's assembled and yeah, I went with the same color scheme and I think it looks pretty good. Also used pretty much the same components, so the same hot hand, the same motors, the same BMG stuff inside, like again, the same components, because uh, well, they worked well, so I replaced them. Only thing I replaced is the hot hand fan. That fan, uh, that was the 3007 with the mini afterburner. With the mini self burner, it's a 3010 fan. So I had to buy a new fan for that, and I bought a Winsin 24 volt fan for that. Uh, I guess we'll see how well that works. I usually use GDS time, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, you can see that I also mounted the Kuspa back here on the carriage on the strain relief, and uh, yeah, I think that should work pretty well. Uh, the carriage mount is, you know, this had to be reprinted as well for the mini style burner, but this part, this uh, clicky probe thing, I literally just used the same component because, you know, it still worked. But I am considering changing to a different probe. 
uh, clicky. It's you know very complicated. Uh, it, I had some problems with the clicky probe a few times where I ended up printing too far or too close to the bed. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm considering replacing it with a different probe, but uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I might just you know. Since I already have the thing configured for click, uh, clicky, I might just keep it as well, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. This will be mounted on the printer in the next video. I still have to do the panels first, and then, uh, yeah, after the panels, I have to remount the Z drives, remount the gantry, and then mount this to the gantry. And then uh, electronics, and you know, there's still a lot of stuff to do, so... Yeah, I think this, along with electronics, uh, will be in the next video. I'm still waiting for the panels, so uh, yeah, there was just a few delays. First of all, there was a, a part that I sent that they couldn't cut, and then looks like they also downgraded their free shipping to ground from two days. So yeah, still waiting for the panels, but in the meantime, I decided to uh, test fit all of, all of these skirts. So as you can see, both the top and bottom skirts are now in place, and you can also see that I did... Uh, uh, I added a display to the front top skirt here, and that's a Mini 12864 display that I had since uh, for when I first built uh, Voron 2.2. But on the Voron right now, I use a Raspberry Pi Touch display, so yeah, this has been my Micron display for a while now. And uh, yeah, so I, decided, I designed a skirt for that. And on the side, you can see that I have a skirt with a Keystone insert, which has a USB-A port on the side. Inside that's a USB-B full-sized uh, That's for the Kuspa. So if I want to connect the Kuspa, which uh, requires a USB cable and you don't want your USB cable to be in the like normal like umbilical for the tool head because that uh, the, the USB cable will eventually die. That's the biggest thing. So yeah, when I want to connect the Kuspa, I can just connect a USB cable there USB A to C and connect the Kuspa that way uh, So uh, yeah, both the skirts are, as I said, ready. On this side, there are these uh, 4010, I think 40, no, yeah, I think 4010, not 3010, uh, fans for the electronics. So I have two on the top, two on the bottom. They're both uh, 24 volts and um, yeah, for cooling the electronics. I also have the hinges in place, as you can see. So these are the Gucci hinges I designed. And what makes these Gucci is the uh, use of bearings inside these you can definitely get away with not using uh, bearings for your door hinges But decided to try that since I already have a decent amount of, of these hinges uh, lying around and yeah I'll put a clip of that working on the screen right now. So Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out as well, and it is also very easy to remove as you can see from that clip. So uh, Yeah, I think this will work really well. So yeah, I just need to design the handle for the door or find the 1515 handle for the door and then we'll also have to figure out a way to latch the door in place and I don't want to use magnets for that so uh, we'll see and yeah I should probably mention the reason I don't want to use magnets is because uh, I will be replacing the thinner foam tape here with a thicker one and I'll f uh, use foam tape on all four sides to seal the door and yeah, with that, uh, I don't think magnets will be strong enough to keep it keep the door in place. So, yeah, I need to figure out a solution for that. But uh, yeah, we'll see that later in the video. And I'm also going to cover the extrusion slots. Like uh, in this case, I mounted the hinges on this side with the wrong size screws. So that's what you're seeing here. But the other sides are fine. But all of these extrusion slots, I will be covering with a 1515. Uh, extrusion slot cover and I think that will look pretty nice too. It will add more uh, purple accents on the outside of the printer which I think will look pretty nice. I'm doing something similar on the Voron 2 as well but those are off the shelf obviously for this one I'll have to 3D print them but yeah I think that will look pretty nice. So uh, yeah I think the next step is the panels. To be able to mount them I'll have to remove these skirts again which is the reason why I didn't want to mount these in the first place but yeah, other than that, it should be fairly easy, so I'll be back when FedEx decides to finally deliver my packages. The panels are finally here and I mounted them on the printer, well, half of them I guess. The top bottom deck panel, so the top transparent one of the bottom deck panel assembly, and both the uh, top deck panels are now in place. And uh, yeah, you can see the diffused film and behind that the LED strips. I think there are six LED strips if I remember correctly. I was using two previously, so these are the same LEDs. You can also see that I have the drag chain mount back here and uh, the webcam mount in the front. These both have these uh, cable routing cutouts, so 
I'll just uh, use them to route the cables in here and the front one is for the LED power wires and the USB cable for the webcam and that part is already routed but it's not the easiest to see right now obviously so yeah, it's pretty similar to this though. The octopus uh, will sit here between these two uh, thin rails but I have to design a mount for that. The stock Voron 2.4 octopus thin rail mount is what I printed previously but uh, it doesn't work very well. Uh, main problem is the thin rail mount is very thick and with that the heat sinks on the step sticks and the fuses on the octopus are higher than the top of the skirts which means I can't put the acrylic panel on top so that's the problem I have to design a new thin rail mount but that thin rail mount the stock Voron 2.4 one is uh, 2.4 R2 one technically is uh, too tall and I'm sure I can make that thinner so that's what I'm going to do uh, these thin rails are mostly mounted with M5 tapped screws on this ACM panel so now this is an M5 screw this one though I stripped and as a result I had to have an M6 screw. I had to super glue an M6 nut here and this M6 screw screws into that. Not ideal but it works. With these other thin rails I'm using the M6 nut as a spacer because that spacer is also necessary because you can see the M3 nuts here. So uh, that's one of the things I had to uh, change after ordering these panels. They contacted me about not being able to drill the uh, 2.5mm diameter holes on the ACM panels. Apparently they can only do uh, 0.125 inches, uh, whatever that is in metric, I don't remember, but it's a bit larger than 3mm. So I have made the holes a bit larger to 3.5mm diameter and yeah, I had to use nuts as a result. And yeah, for that I had to you know, increase the clearance a bit and that's what I used the M6 nut for on all of these so not ideal I lost, I lost a decent amount of Z space in the top electronics chamber as a result but yeah uh, yeah, I think it'll still work the display is in here as I talked about earlier in the video the Raspberry Pi mounted here with the stock Warren 2.4 R2 DIN clips and you know, it works just fine and there is enough room for USB routing to the you know, to the Octopus to the uh, to the keystone here to the webcam and you know these uh, ribbon cables for the display and all that should fit in here so yeah uh, that's how the top electronics chamber is going to be the bottom electronics chamber I'm still working on there's a reason why I, ha I haven't mounted the bottom uh, bottom bottom deck panel the ACM one on the bottom deck panel assembly I'll talk more about that I guess later in this video might be in the next video depending on what I do in the end uh, we'll see these acrylic panels, so this is not polycarbonate, this is acrylic, but these transparent ones, these are polycarbonate because they are in the chamber. This is, these just cover the electronics, so you know, one goes on top, one goes on the bottom. This is for the bottom because it has the feet. Uh, these are acrylic and they just cover the electronics and they are mounted in place with uh, four, 16 screws per side, so that is a bit overkill. There is a version of the same design that uses magnets, I could have done that, but I don't know, I just don't like using magnets whenever possible, whenever I can avoid them. So yeah, went with screws. It's easy enough with my ES15 anyway. So uh, yeah, that I will continue working on. I just need to mount the uh, uh, skirt trim parts to the uh, acrylic and so it will just screw in place. But I have to finish the chambers first, obviously. You can also see the uh, extrusion covers here. So this is different than the one I showed earlier in the video, this one. This one is, was a bit of a pain in the ass to insert into the slot of the extrusion and uh, yeah, it was easy to break them. So I uh, designed new ones. The, I guess I'll show these in CAD, the way these work, but yeah, I think these look nicer as well. These are, these are a bit wider, so it makes the uh, purple accent a bit more pronounced. And yeah, I think these will work pretty well. I think I'm going to print one more uh, batch of this and just you know, just work on this bit a bit. The ends tend to curl a bit out so outwards. So I'll design one last part for that. And yeah, I think this is the fifth or sixth revision so far, but that will be the last one because yeah, these work pretty well. And that's what I'm going to use. That's what I use on all three sides. So two sides and the rear. The front, I'm also going to use those, but instead of printing a full size one and cutting it to size, I'll just, you know, measure the distance between these two 
hinge parts and the distance between the sand onto hinge and you know the skirt and you know measure that and just you know print uh, the correct size i think that will look a bit nicer i still have to figure out what i'm going to do with the latch on this side so as a result i haven't covered this extrusion either because i'm pretty sure there will be something in here for the latch and yeah i still have to figure what that's going to be before that i can't really print the uh, extrusion slot covers because you know, again I don't know the size and I don't want to cut them I'll use the same style on the door as well instead of these but on the door instead of just covering the extrusions uh, slots I'm considering just making it a rectangle so it'll look like a frame around the transparent window part of the uh, door I think that will look pretty nice I'll have to still design that and before that I still have to figure out the latch and still have to figure out the handle for the door so yeah, uh, that's what I I will work on next in this video, and um, yeah, I'll also continue working on the panels, I guess, and I'll be back with something. Uh, I guess I'll be back with these, I'll just show these in CAD how these work, because I don't really want to remove this from the extrusion slot, and then yeah, I'll show you the handle uh, that I start already started working on, and I'll continue working on the panels. So here it is, the extrusion slot covers. And uh, you can see the clips in here, and this is before making the modification that I mentioned in the video. So instead of having these clips here, I'll move it to the end and you know make sure it doesn't curl out. But otherwise, the mechanism will be exactly the same. So you can see uh, you know, the clips here. These are actually just uh, copied from Zerancho's uh, zero panels clips, but uh, modified a bit, well, a decent amount. But the overall shape is from that. I uh, added these uh, 45 degree chamfers and 45 degrees in this angle as well and that just makes insertion of these clips a bit easier into the extrusion slots. I can also see that it's not uh, these clips don't run the entire length of the extrusion slot cover. Again it's just you know it's not necessary this is not under any kind of load and it's just easier to have you know some space in between. It makes uh, clipping these in and out a bit easier. But yeah, it's again, thanks to Zerancho, I just copied his design and modified it a decent amount. And you can see how that goes into an extrusion. So this is the open build style 1515 extrusion. The DFH, Doom Cube, Micron extrusions are not based on the open builds design. It's instead based on the, I think it's the same as the LDO one. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. Uh, so it's a bit of a different profile, but you know, same idea, so you can see how that goes in here, and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. So uh, I don't think I'm going to do it in this video, but by next video I'm going to move these uh, clips to the end of the slot covers and reprint these, and uh, that should uh, fix the issue of these ends of these extrusion slot covers just curling out. And here is the new handle for the door, I think it turned out pretty well. This is a scaled down version of the handle, top handle you can find on the Voron 2.2 but modified to work with 15-15 extrusions so scaled down to 75%. The whole sizes are adjusted for this obviously and also got rid of the top panel mount thing the Voron 2.2 version has and uh, yeah I think this will work pretty well. I like this a lot more than the stock Voron 0 and uh, I don't remember what the handle for the stock Micron is but for the Voron 0. A handle because you can actually put your fingers behind this handle and you know hold it instead of you know just grabbing with your fingers and pulling i think this will work a lot better especially because this door i'm sure it will take a bit of force to open and close because it will be sealed so yeah i think this handle will work pretty well and um, yeah i'll release the files for the handle the hinge uh, the modified uh, front skirt display thing and the keystone on the again on the side from uh, skirt and you know, all the custom files I made I'll release them but I'll release them in the next video because and the extrusion slot covers but yeah I'll release them in the next video because there's still some work I need to do you can see that I uh, one of the parts of this hinge broke and yeah I need to reprint that but on top of that I think I need to redesign that the toollessness of this was nice but I think I should just add a screw that goes from the top to the bottom and into an insert in here and that way these parts won't be in you know under any kind of stress because you know they won't have to snap into the uh, bearing it's just have the screw that does that and yeah I think that will be a bit uh, more durable so I have to do that 
and yeah I still have to do the frame around this as well so the extrusion slope covers but rectangular like a frame around the window as I described earlier I still have to design that as well so yeah there is still a decent amount of CAD work to do and yeah I have to print those as well but I also have to work on the electronics the gantry needs to go and back in place the Z drives etc so there is still a decent amount of work to do but the next step in my mind is getting that bottom uh, deck ACM panel in place so that I can uh, start the wiring and also mount the Z drive so that I can put the gantry back in place as well that's you know, that's what's preventing me from putting the gantry back in place and here is the bottom bottom uh, deck panel the ACM one I still haven't mounted this to the printer as you can see and uh, the reason is I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this so uh, you can see the 24 volt power supply mounted here and the DIN rail mounted next to it the plan was to mount a 12 volt power supply on this DIN rail using the Voron 2.4 R2 DIN rail clips but uh, it just doesn't fit there and you know this is my fault obviously I should have checked but well I didn't so uh, yeah I'm trying to figure out what to do with that power supply on the other side the plan was to have the RGB strips there and actually have you know all the parts uh, cut to size and whatnot but there are a few dead segments on these that I you know, I have to replace from uh, other strips and you know, things like that plus the adhesive on the back side of these is really crappy so I'll have to replace this with VHP but uh, then I don't know how I'm going to power those so I, as I said I can't really figure out a way to mount that 12 volt power supply and these LEDs do draw a decent amount of power I haven't actually checked whether that's in spec for the buck converter and octopus or not I just didn't want to put it on the octopus 12 volt buck converter but now that I can't fit the 12 volt power supply I will check and see whether that works or not but um, yeah, ideally I wouldn't really put that on the octopus because again these are a decent amount of power but yeah I don't know I'll figure that out by the next video uh, but yeah I'll do that and mount the LEDs here and yeah I guess I'll have some LEDs but uh, honestly if that doesn't work it's not that big of a deal anyway because you know most of that will be blocked by the bed the extrusions and the zero filter so you'll only see a bit on the front and a bit on the back and actually might not look that well either with on the webcam which is also important so I don't know I just wanted a use for these RGB strips yeah I don't know if I'm going to use them or not I guess we will see uh, I do another advantage of not having the buck, uh, 12 volt power supply here though is it will leave me some room here for terminal blocks which might make uh, wiring a bit easier it is also yeah, allowing giving me some room for future expansion if I mount, if I want to mount something on the DIN rail here so you know it's not all bad that I can't fit the 12 volt power supply there but I just need to make sure that the RGB strips will work with the buck converter on the octopus and yeah if they work then I can still continue with continue with the same plan uh, before I end this video I should probably mention where I found the uh, skirts and other doom cube 3d printed files too since they aren't on the doom cube github repository so the doom cube parts for the micron are still being worked on I found these on the Doomcube uh, server and uh, yeah if you really want them you can find them there but honestly I'd say just wait a while this, these files are still being worked on and they're still making some changes and I'm sure these will be published to a github repository or something like that eventually but if you want them now then uh, you can find them on the Doomcube discord server yeah that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like down below and thanks for watching